Welcome to the Healing the Trauma Within Summit. In this session, I am speaking with Sandra Coos. We're going to be talking about how to embrace your triggers. So let me tell you a little bit about Sandra. Sandra Coos is an intuitive trauma release and self-empowerment coach, a Reiki master and teacher, certified traumatic incident reduction facilitator, and published author. Her book, Journey to Yourself, How to Heal from Trauma, written by someone who did, is a teaching memoir that walks readers not only through her own story of abuse and healing, but offers strategies, exercises, and insights to support them on their healing journey. Sandra works with heart-centered women who yearn for a deeper meaning and purpose in life. She helps them to release their traumatic past and guides them toward discovering their full potential so they can rise up and claim their true place in this world. So welcome, Sandra. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to have you here. This is going to be a great topic. Um, but before we dive into how to embrace our triggers, let's talk about what triggers are and what they do to us. Okay. Well, triggers are, in essence, a warning system, an emotional memory from something that happened in the past where we were powerless to act. It could have been a traumatic event, it could be a car accident, the sudden death of a loved one, or just something like being bullied in school or just being told something that wasn't very traumatic, but it still left an imprint on us. So the next time we feel the same emotion that we felt when the trigger happened, this trigger, this emotion rushes to the surface and we just, in essence, stand our ground. And we say, we followed this before, never again. And so we lash out. This is basically a trigger. Okay. It also can um, trigger emotions like anxiety, depression, anger, fear, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah. And triggers are very powerful, not in a good way. <laughs> But they are very powerful because they can take us back into that moment of trauma yes. when the trauma happens. So how do we start to release those triggers? To release those triggers, we first have to understand that we actually have been triggered. Because being triggered is an emotional response. And when the emotions take over, logic has no room. <laughs> so we can't just say, wait a minute, what just happened? Because we're so emotionally charged. We could, yes, we can be anxious. We can have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. We can jump back into PTSD, depending on what happened and why the trigger came up. So first we have to understand that we were triggered and we have to be okay with that. For the most part, we resent our triggers because we don't like to feel this negativity, this anxiety. We don't want this. So we resent it, we push it back down. But that is the wrong approach because a trigger shows us what needs healing within us. So rather than suppressing them or trying to push them back down, we should allow the emotions to be what they are and bring understanding to it. So we should feel the emotions, allow those emotions to happen. Yes, our negative emotions are like a roadmap. They tell us, look, this needs our attention. This is triggering us because we haven't healed that yet. So okay. negative emotions are nothing bad. They're just another form of emotions and anxiety, fear is again, emotions. We're afraid because we were powerless in this moment and we don't want to be powerless again. So we're afraid that if we let this happen again, whatever that situation was, we're going back to being powerless. And when we look at trauma, the first thing we, lo we lose is our sense of being in control. Oh yeah. Because whatever happened made us powerless. That is so true. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is so true. Um, and then we, we tend to continue that feeling, that sense of uh, loss of control and that yes. powerlessness throughout our lives until we heal from that trauma. Exactly. That's why we have so many perfectionist control freaks and people with OCD. 
That's where this comes from. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> Working on it, but yeah. <laughs> but this is yeah. where the need to control and perfectionism comes from. Mm -hmm. Because with perfectionism, there are things we can control. And so to have that sense of control, we're trying so hard to be perfect. And at some point, we drive ourselves crazy with that. Oh, yes, I know. I know. Um, I'm, I'm constantly redoing things because they're just not quite right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, is I preach that perfection is an illusion and it's something that we'll never achieve, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but yet I still strive for it myself. It's that control thing. Yeah. Um, because you know, for me, I lost control of my life, like around age five, when my parents divorced, that's when my first trauma happened. Mm -hmm. So I've been spiraling out of control for a long time. And so I try to control where I can, I control relationships when I can, I control my work, my business, you know, my food um lots of of different ways to control um you know which can also be a type of trigger can't it yes most definitely if we lose you know we we feel out of control or we feel like um we feel that sense of powerlessness again that can trigger us into reliving our traumas yes because in essence the loss of control is a part of us that's missing, but really it's not missing, it's just buried. Our sense of control is still there, it's just buried underneath the trauma. And once we start to release the trauma, we lose that need to be in control because our natural sense of control is coming back because releasing trauma is so powerful. It's so empowering to us. We're basically getting ourselves back. We get our lives back just by releasing the emotional triggers that are still attached to something that happened in our lives and should just be a part of our story. No more or less significant than what we had to eat this morning. Right. And I love that you use the term release because, um, you know, I call myself a trauma release coach. So do I. Because I, I think <laughs> release is so much more empowering than recovery. And I'm gonna talk about this in a couple other episodes, I'm sure, a couple other sessions. Um, we'll cover it too, but just recovery to me is, is something that's like an illness or a disease or, mm -hmm. you know, it's when our, our trauma first happens, we have to recover from whatever it was. Yeah. If it was a car accident or a, a sexual assault or domestic abuse or, you know, whatever it was, or something happened to us that we had to recover from. But after that, we no longer have to recover from the actual incident. We have to release and heal from the lasting effects mm -hmm. of it. So I love that you use the term release rather than recover. Yes, thank you. So, okay, so when we get triggered, what, what can we do during a trigger? You know, let's say something happened, it, it's triggered a panic attack or an anxiety attack or an episode of depression or something like that. What do we do? How do we, how do we get ourselves out of it? Okay, well, the first thing that's very important is after we get triggered and we start to realize it. I mean, it's, it's a journey. We have to learn to realize when we are being triggered. Mm -hmm. So once we're there, that we actually realize either five minutes later, two hours later, or right then and there, depending on the situation. I mean, more intense triggers will be harder to realize in the beginning because they're just completely take over. Mm -hmm. Then... First thing, not punish ourselves for it. Because like I said, triggers are nothing bad. They show us what we need to heal. That's all that is. It's a good thing that they come up, but we have to start seeing them as such. So, I mean, I still also have the occasional trigger come up, okay. <laughs> but I'm excited about that because I say, okay, finally something else that wants to leave. So then the first thing that I do is take a deep breath to calm myself down. That's very important. We have to breathe and release the energy of that explosive trigger. Then we have to figure out what we were actually feeling. When we're being triggered, there's so much going on in our head. And 
we don't even know what the exact name is from what we're feeling. We're angry, we're upset, we're something. And this is something we have to figure out. So we have to dig deeper. If it's anger, anger is a mask. Anger is a mask for pain. So why are we hurting? It could be jealousy. Jealousy is a lack for something we're missing within ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like always emotions that cover emotions. Then we have to see, okay, is it that I was feeling neglected? I was feeling ridiculed. I was feeling judged. I was feeling dismissed. You know, once we know what we're feeling, then we can ask ourselves, okay, where did I feel like this before? And then you follow the emotion and in your, in your mind, you play different scenarios through your head until you get to an incident where you felt exactly the same. And then you look at it and you bring understanding to yourself to what happened because it was in the past, it already happened. So it shouldn't have such an impact on you. So by looking at it, you understand, you release it because now you know, and that knowledge can really help you to release that trigger because you're not the person anymore. Right. So af- right. So after you ask, okay, where else did I feel like this? And you continue this journey until you get to the very first time. And you will know when it's the very first trigger because that will be the most intense. I always get like pressure in my stomach when I get to the very first trigger and look at it and release it. And this is a very easy and quick way to understand and release triggers. So it's it's hard for me to kind of think about embracing them because like you said, we think of triggers as something that's bad. And yeah. so the thought of embracing them is like, well, no, I, I don't want to embrace it. I want it to go away. <laughs> but I guess in order for it to go away, we have to accept it. Yes, and we because... have to, yeah, we have to embrace it just like we do with our trauma. Exactly. It's, it takes some time, you know, to really shift from the mindset. I don't want to feel into a trigger. I just want it to go away Mm -hmm. to embracing it, to allow it to go away. Because as long as we don't embrace it and let's say, no, okay, maybe not embrace, but accept them for who they, for what they are. How about that? (laughs) That is, yeah, that wording for me, for me is easier Okay. Um, no, it may be that others, you know, the embracing it, it works, but I, th- and I think that's because just the way I teach, I teach acceptance, you know, you've got to accept mm-hmm. your, your trauma happened and, and that kind of thing before I you can release so it. <laughs> negative, <laughs> except that it happened. Mm-hmm. It has such a negative vibe for me, but then again, I've been through my trauma healing journey. So I look at it from a different perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's really interesting how, how we can view it the same, mm-hmm. but different. Yes. I love that. So yeah. what are your thoughts on using like a trigger journal? I love trigger journals. The technique that I just explained, I have as a thought journal. So I'm creating an MP3 and it's part of my new book how to use the trigger journal, the thought journal. So where you really write down your thought or trigger that just came up and analyze it. Mm -hmm. And then do the same way than what I just explained with following the trigger and trying to understand it. Journaling has so many amazing ways to journal. It's truly impressive. So yeah, I love trigger journals and but as long as they are meant to help you release and understand the trigger, it's so important that we understand the trigger because by understanding, we can release it. By understanding, we can say, okay, now I understand, now I can let it go. That is true. That is true. Um, it, it's hard to let go of something that we don't really understand or comprehend. Right. Now, with this sugar journal um so we just write down our thoughts we write down our emotions what exactly do you do you have us write down 
Well, first I would help you to, well, I would suggest understanding your emotion, what you just felt, because that is key. Okay. To release the trigger. And then write down what triggered you. Was it a situation? Was it a person? Was it a place? Was it something someone said or how someone said it? If a memory popped into your mind, what was that? If not, okay, not an issue. And then you follow the trigger and write down what came up. So because just writing down the trigger doesn't really get you very far because sure. the trigger is still there. So it's always about understanding the trigger. How do we, how do we really dive into understanding that trigger? I mean, I, I mean, how do we get to the, the first trigger like you were talking about? How do we, you know, really get down into that? Are there certain questions we should ask ourselves or, you know, things that we should, we should be thinking of? Well, we should always ask, where did I feel like this before? And then we have to go within ourselves and look for the trigger. At the beginning, this can be very intimidating because we don't want to see the bad stuff. We don't want to go back into the bad stuff, but this is where healing and transformation happens by allowing it to come forward, by allowing it to come up and show what it has to tell us and then leave. So always ask yourself, where did I feel like this before? If you want to get deeper into the incident, you see them say, okay, why did I feel like this before? What exactly happened? And then you just wait for the picture to emerge in your mind and let the trigger play out. So the incident that happened, just let it play out and just look at it like a movie. So you're not really in it, you're looking at it. Okay, so we're not getting sucked back into yes. reliving our traumas. Exactly. That's not the point. The point is just looking at it for understanding. Right. Thinking of it as a, um, oh, what's the term I want to use? Almost a clinical educational perspective. Yes. Dissecting. Pretty much. Yeah. The most minuscule pieces until we understand. Okay. Awesome. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on um, the Healing the Trauma Within Summit, sharing with us a little bit about triggers and how we can embrace them in order to release them. I love it. You're very welcome. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And listeners, thank you for tuning into this session. We'll talk to you in one of the other sessions.